Okay, we're going to have a quick look at uh, denaturing of proteins and, and how this occurs. And specifically, we're going to have a look at how it occurs in enzymes. So first off, let's just start by reviewing our protein structure. And our protein structures in our primary structures are made up of these amino acids uh, joined with peptide bonds. And they're joined, each one of those amino acids is a monomer, making up the big polymer of amino acids. Um, that's our primary structure. A secondary structure is um, the, the, the folding in beta pleated, pleated sheets or our coiling um, in our alpha helixes of this primary structure. Okay, so getting this long line of, of amino acids and either folding it up or coiling it, and that's done by um, regular hydrogen bonds in between um, this strand in the, in the primary structure. Next we move to the, the tertiary structure and this is where we get um, the complex three-dimensional shape that uh, is quite characteristic of all proteins. Um, we have um, disulfide bonds occurring between various points um, that, that hold it in that shape and also some hydrogen bonds as well. Um, so that's a tertiary structure and the quaternary structure is when we put a couple of these um, units in the tertiary structure together, so join a few uh, bits of protein together. And, and this is a structure that we have in enzymes. And here's an example of, of some different enzymes and we can see that each one of them has a, a, quite a complex shape um, that they um, look significantly different from each other. And that's what's giving uh, that shape specificity. And this is really important because this is the, the shape um, and the difference that we're getting in the active sites of enzymes. They're specific, they only work for particular um, substrates because they're the only one that, ones that fit. Okay. So let's move on to denaturing. Now what's happening in denaturing is, if we revisit our structure a little bit here, um, these hydrogen bonds in the beta pleated sheet or alpha helixes um, can, be, can be damaged. Um, or the disulfide bonds can be damaged. And there's a few different ways that, that this can occur. Uh, it can occur at very high temperatures. Um, it can ex occur at extreme pH, as high or low pH. Um, and other chemicals can also do it. And when the other chemicals um, um, come in contact uh, with the protein, um, it'll, it allows the, the molecules just to arrange themselves a bit different. It causes a disruption to how the molecules would normally set themselves up. Okay, and any disruption to chemical bonds um, in this molecule can have a, a, a pretty big effect on its shape. So looking at that, um, here we have um, the process of denaturing. And we can see that we have this specific three-dimensional shape, whereas here we have a lot of those bonds breaking down. And when those bonds break down, um, the, the molecule more or less unravels a little bit. And we have um, a strand. And that's more often than not, irreversible. Okay? It occurs in one direction um, and it's, it's very difficult um, without making the protein again to get it back into that shape. Okay? So key points today, um, denaturing is um, when the, the bonds that hold the protein in its three-dimensional shape are broken down um, and it's often reverse, irreversible. Um, it occurred by high temperatures not by low temperatures, only by high temperatures and extremes in pH or other chemicals. Okay, good luck with uh, looking at denaturing of enzymes.